physical diminishment and mental diminishment of death, darkness, things that we experience, darkness is not, will not be the end. The light is coming in this life and in life eternal. And life eternal means life not only in a long, eternal number of years, but also speaks to the depth and the richness of the life that we can have even now. There is hope when we follow Jesus, the light of the world, the only one who can make all things right. Great light. Second, peace. Isaiah uses imageries of a growing nation that is full of joy for everyone. He speaks of the joy of the harvest instead of the dividing of plunders of war. He speaks of the instruments of war like the rod and the boots of the marching warriors and the garments that you wear in war being used as fuel for a fire to warm human hearts. Jesus comes to end violence and war. Unlike a king leading armies into battle, Jesus invites us with these words, Come to me. And another handles Messiah, All ye who we are weary. I'll stop right there. <laughs> All you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Many of us carry heavy burdens this day. We are weary, I am weary, from the war against COVID-19. I am exhausted from the idea battles of ideologies and politics. How awful it is that in our nation of abundance, there is a battle to put food on people's tables or roofs over their heads. And for many of us, it's a battle at times to wake up in the morning to face one more day of pain in body or in soul. We have a Savior who brings us rest, who brings us peace. Peace. And third, transformation and restoration. For unto us a child is born who transforms hearts and minds, restoring the image of God within us and throughout this world. Jesus' reign is a reign of shalom. That's the Hebrew word. It's so much more than peace as just not having conflict or war. Shalom means also harmony wholeness, completeness. No human leader can provide these, even though we often expect it of the leaders of our governments and our schools and even our congregations, I dare say. Jesus, fully human and fully God, who began his life as a baby in a manger, is the sovereign, the leader, who is at work right here and right now on a mission that reaches its fulfillment when he comes to judge all peoples and when he will make all things right by his great grace and mercy and love and justice. He is our peace now and forever. Transformation, restoration. In these verses are hope as well as a mission. Light. I, I, I got a text message from a, from a friend earlier this week at about 6.30 or quarter of seven in the morning. And it simply said this, if you aren't up, get up and look at the sunrise. <laughs> That's bringing light into another person's life. I, I, 
I like watching the sunrise and the sunset, but I was in a, I was in a funk that morning and I just hadn't even noticed it. But darn if I didn't get that message and run to the window and admire and see the most amazing colors that I had that I'd seen in quite some time. Light. Receive the light of the world and then let that light shine through you. Peace. There was a story in the news this past week about the trial of Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And on the final day of the trial, when the, when the judgment was going to be made, um, there were protests outside the courthouse, people protesting on either side of the issue, as we are so good at doing in our nation. And the sheriff in that community bought hot coffee and walked around. And I can tell you, Kenosha, Wisconsin is cold. I live near there. You don't want to be out there in this time of the year. And that sheriff took coffee and gave cups of coffee to all different groups of people, not one side or the other, simply to be bringing peace. Let the peace of Christ that we are promised will dwell in our hearts and minds bring us peace within and find ways to enact peace with others and transformation and restoration. We may be residents of Carlisle or Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania or Edinburgh or Fort Valley or Woodstock, Virginia. We are all citizens of the United States. Many of us um, identify as fans of Central Volleyball and football who are having an amazing run. The volleyball team took second in states. What an amazing accomplishment. And the football team is still on a roll. You know, we are fans of Central. And we are perhaps members of civic clubs, and many of us of a congregation, this one in particular. Those are all really good things. But the best thing is that each of us, each of us, whether we believe it or not, are children, beloved children, of the wonderful Counselor the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, that is our real identity. It is our true identity. May we believe it. May it be so for us and for all people. Amen.
Please stand as you are able in body or spirit for the affirmation of faith which is in our bulletin. We believe that God is at work in our world, turning hopeless and evil situations into good. We believe that goodness and justice will triumph in the end, and that tyranny and oppression cannot last forever. One day all tears will be wiped away, the Lamb will lie down with the Lion, and justice will roll down like a mighty stream. True peace and true reconciliation are not only desired, they are assured and guaranteed in Christ. This is our faith, this is our hope. Thank you, you may be seated. Please notice and pay attention to the request for prayers and cards at the back of our bulletin. There are um, many situations that we carry in our hearts today. Some of them are extremely heavy. The death of loved ones and neighbors, um, people who are in nursing homes, people who have been sick from COVID as well as other things. And I ask that you would hold those people and those thoughts in your prayers as I lead us in prayer. Lord, we come to you in a time of coldness and darkness, looking for warmth and light. There are those in our community, in our world, whose, who are, whose homes are physically freezing. And there are those whose lives are spiritually chilling. We know that we can help people, warm people's homes. And we also know that you can warm people's lives. We pray that there will be no more gloom for those who are in anguish. We pray that you would lift away people's burdens. We pray that you remove the things that oppress from people's lives. We pray that you give courage to those who are afraid. Your light calls us forth to follow and serve you. Your light still shines in the darkness for all to see in this world. May we continue to reflect your light in our lives, in our service, and in our words, and in our deeds. This we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand for the doxology.
are a child of God, we follow Jesus, who is the light of the world. And it's interesting that Jesus then turned that around to his disciples, and he said, you are the light of the world. And so go forth from this place, sharing the light of God's love, the light of the grace that Jesus gives us, the light of the wisdom and the power and the comfort that the Holy Spirit provides to us each and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.